Woo! Who's this? Wow! Oh, oh my god, I love her. Okay. <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome to A Foretold Affair. So the game developers were kind enough to send me a game key for this and figured that I would enjoy it. I know a lot of my viewers are fans of the romance side so there is romantic options in this game and what I like about this as well is the MC can be whatever gender you want them to be which is really nice because uh, I know a lot of uh, games just make them either male or female and there's no other like in between or anything like that but it's very nice also with the romance option there's one male one female and one a gender I believe so that's very nice too so before we get started if you guys would like to check out the game yourself there's a link in the description where you can get it on Steam I believe it's on issue as well I'm not entirely sure but if you guys want to check out the game developers well I'll leave a link to their stuff as well now, let's get started! I know this is all like steampunky kind of thing and I fucking love that. It's one of my favorite things, uh, one of my favorite uh, themes I guess you can say. Anyway, despite the complete blackness and surroundings, it is rather comfortable in the large silent room. At least I assumed it's large considering how it looked from the outside. Spring has just begun to turn to summer, so the weather is ideal. Not yet too hot and no worries from being rained on. I don't have much else to appreciate in this moment. I'm still waiting after all. What are we waiting for? Well, I'm always waiting. Today is simply a special kind. I'm waiting for something specific. Something very specific. That I've waited for a long time. But this must be the end of my waiting. In a few moments, it'll all be over. Okay. In the dark space is illuminated by a single, by a single candle, and I know they have finally arrived. Welcome, Buffalo Seer. I am pleased to be here. Thank you for get granting me this request. Are we Buffalo Seer? I think we are. From the shadows, the three council members appear. Dog Healer. Antelope Reader. Bird Seer. Okay, out of all of they, them, the Bird Seer kind of looks creepy. Not gonna lie there. <laughs> I have to give them different voices, God damn it! You have shown great diligence in your duties and respect for our order. That is kind of you to say. I tug in one of my sleeves out of nervousness. It has been quite some time since I've met with the with the council in person. Oh God! Oh, what voice do I have to give? Yes, because of your, your consistency, we are granted to your we are granted you your request. You have now permission to look into your own future. At that statement, I almost tore a hole in my cloak. I've actually done it. I'm truly grateful. Remember, oh, uh, remember, you must look a minimum of three years into the future, and the council will see whether it is that you do. Do you accept? Of course. I have no fear for what is to come. Very well. You may begin. We're looking into the future. Oh my gosh. All around me, the lights begin to spread looking like sun sunlight fluttering through clear water the sight is mesmerizing more scary than be more scary than ever because for once it's my own ooh okay within the dust of the unknown there is a light where you can see we get to choose oh this is so cool i like this so we get to choose our own future all right so we have like a dagger here i don't know if that's money but there's gears then there is a ooh i don't know which one i i'm kind of drawn to this one if I'm being completely honest, maybe it's because of the red, but I don't know. I might pick this one. Or maybe this one. Or maybe this one. I don't fucking know. Let's just go with this. <laughs> as quickly as it appeared, the light fades, leaving me leaving me dumbstruck. Can't believe it. You all must have seen it. Have I made a mistake? Was I truly correct? The council appears once more before me, none of them speaking. Even without seeing their faces, I can tell from their stance that they are somewhat uncomfortable from what they we saw here today. You know as well as I that false visions are in possibility. What we saw today will someday come to be. What will you do now? It seems that Antelope Reader also asked the question that we all know the answer to. There is one possibility for me now. With your permission, I wish to leave immediately. The three currently nod in unison and no with no hesitation. Uh, wait, who is the British voice? God damn it, I don't remember anymore. It is likely for the best. We will g we will give you leave. Kerry will be called to send you out to the walled sanctuary. Is where anywhere is there anywhere you wish to be taken specifically? Yes, the capital city, Mary. 
A wise choice. It will be as you request. Dog healer and bird seer fade into the darkness. Leave me alone with antelope reader. My mind is racing. It's too much. Uh, ah, uh, the bu buffalo seer. <laughs> I messed up the voices. <laughs> with a start, I <laughs> with a start, I return to the present. Yes. The supplies you will need for your journey are brought being brought now. After that, you will be sent on your way. I understand. Good. Do not let your vision of the future blind you in the present necessi necessities. Many have gone astray and endured undue har hardship through the such negligence. The society of normals is not meant for us. You will not be welcome there. Remain cautious. I am not sure what to say, so I remain silent. After a moment, dog and bird reappear. The time has come. All is prepared. Farewell, Buffalo Seer. You will be sorely missed. I give them a slight bow and show to show my respect. Thank you for your assistance. And thank you for yours as well, for your expect, uh, expected cooperation. None of us will speak of what occurred here. It goes without saying. Very well, safe travels. And I do not expect to see you in the sanctuary again. The tone in the last part of the statement makes it clear that, that, that it is thinly veiled demand. Rather than a simple statement, I can't keep a smile on my face. We are certainly agreed. Okay, so from what I've gathered, it seems like they they possibly are not human. The normals are probably human, right? This is not what I expected when I left the sanctuary. Also, I like how the clouds are moving in the background. That's pretty cool. I've been wondering I've been wandering Marie for several minutes now and have yet to see a single person. I assumed that the capital was well populated, but so far all I've seen are, are drab, brown buildings and empty streets. Not exactly impressive. The summer sun is likewise a nuisance. Feeling much hotter in this place with so much with so much metal around it. Why is no one on the street? There's no reason for this. Just as frustration is about to completely take over me, a woman comes running into the plaza. She spots me, then proceeds in my direction. Finally, someone to talk to. Uh, excuse me, but could you answer a couple of questions for me? The young woman bounds directly to me and grabs my arm, tugging me to encourage me forward. No time to talk. Come with me quickly. What the hell? <laughs> Too bewildered to resist, I allow myself to be dragged along. I'm not entirely sure if the drastic situation could change from completely uneventful to dramatic is a good thing or not. Why are you grabbing me? Where are we going? I'll explain later. Just keep moving. Alright. We rush along to the deserted streets until we enter some kind of business district. Along the side of the various storefronts are closed. On the other is a railing across the edge of the land fraction that is too small for my liking. This pace seems wholly un unwarranted considering there aren't many people around. Getting my bearings once more, I try to speak. What are you running from? There's no one here. Unfortunately. You don't see them yet. Trust me, it isn't safe. The young woman pauses another figure appears. Oh, hello, you're very beautiful. He is tall, well-dressed man who seems to be in a great, great distress. My guide runs towards him, waving his attention with one hand while he's putting me al while she's while still pulling me along with the others. Over here! The man looks confused upon seeing the young woman and remains motionless where he stands. He's probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> Without hesitation, the odd lady seemed to assault the man, pushing him onto a nearby store uh, doorway. As soon as he is in arm reach, then takes him into the position in front of him. They're coming from this way. Hide here. The man nods, looking less confused and more concerned. He ducks down as if he's trying to disappear. The woman moves into place where, between the two of us, the man becomes totally hidden. Appearing satisfied, she smiles in a usually nonchalant way, as if nothing had happened. Sorry for the delay. You can go back and ask your questions now. For a moment, I am sh unsure what to say. It all happened so quickly. Uh, what's your plan? No, the plan was to keep running, but since it happened to be- since he happened to be here, I don't think that's gonna work anymore. Now the plan is to stand here. That's not actually the question you had for me, is it though? As soon as she finishes speaking, I waste no time and blurt out the one thing that has remained in my mind since I first arrived. I'm looking for someone. Their name is Kia? They're about my height, with dazzling light gray skin and a very alluring dark blue eyes. Have you seen them? The woman frowns and thought, a mo and thought for a moment or two. Sorry, I haven't seen anyone like that. I look down to the other person here and the man cowering in the doorway. Have you seen Kia? Just ignore him for now, alright? He's someone who needs to lay low for a bit. The man looks up all apolog apologetically, choosing not choosing to speak regardless of the woman's suggestion. I'm I'm afraid I haven't seen or met anyone by that name either. My apologies. It's fine. I expected as much. You don't seem like someone who's particularly helpful. Whoa. <laughs> wow. He frowns at my statement and he lowers his head. It lowers his head back down. By the way, my name is Piper. What's yours? Oh my god. Can I just say? Because I wasn't really looking at her earlier, but she's freaking adorable. Like, look at her hair. 
She's so cute. Also, the other guy too, the guy who's hiding. You may call me Buffalo Seer. The wind raises an eyebrow curiously. I imagine my name isn't uh, terribly common in these parts. All right then, Buffalo Seer. I actually have a question for you. Woo! Who's this? Wow! Oh, oh my god, I love her. Okay. <laughs> Before she can ask, two figures appear to by our side, sliding in without making a sound. I look at them in surprise, though Piper gives them no notice. One of them is a woman with a very peculiar eye that seems to glow. The woman lifts her hand, and now I see what looks like a gun pointing at us. Good afternoon, Piper and company. I don't suppose you've seen Duke January anywhere, have you? Piper does not answer, so I decide to speak up. I've never heard of anyone th with that name January before. The woman turns with me with a critical expression. She was strangely unconcerned with me with me until I spoke. You must be new here. That is true. I just arrived here today, only a few moments ago, actually. Piper speaks up, though still looking at me and not the strange woman addressing us. I haven't seen him. As you can see, I'm trying to deal with someone else rather. I'm trying to deal with someone else is rather important right now. Ex unexpectedly, the woman so slowly lowers her gun while looking at as, as though someone has told her the sky was green. You mean because they're dressed like someone from the sanctuary? The mention of the sanctuary forces me to stifle a guess. Normals aren't supposed to know how we dress to avoid impersonations. They could be pretending, you know. Besides, what does it matter either way? Obviously, they're from the sanctuary. No one would be foolish enough to impersonate in the city. Now, it's not every day someone comes from around here, which is why I'm talking to them. Piper recognizes my clothing for what they mean as well. I certainly hope that it hasn't become common knowledge. Ooh, so it's like a secret society, obviously. I'm just curious as to know if they're if they're different species rather than gender because like the the developers have said that the, the main character can be whatever gender you identify with, which is really cool. But I don't know if that means they're human or not because I I had a feeling at first they they weren't human just from the way they were describing the sanctuary and stuff. But maybe I'm wrong. For now, I will simply assume that the two unexpectedly casual for this situation ladies are sp a special case. Indeed, I am from the sanctuary, You, and you surprise me for recognizing it. Turning to the newcomer, I point at her firearm. Now, is that a real gun? I was told that those were quite illegal here in Vespin. Not to mention nearly impossible to obtain. Maybe you're the one who's pretending. The woman shrugs. Be glad you aren't going to find out. Come on, we're wasting time. Excuse us. She motions her follower to join her as they exit the business direction, disappearing from another street. After they gone, I nearly slapped myself. I didn't ask about Kia. How could I have gotten distracted so easily? Kia, forgive me. Shh. We don't want them to come back. I allow myself to a brief moment of self-pity to turn, then turn back to Piper. So, how exactly do you know that woman? She knew your name. She leans towards me and speaking in a hushed tone. Keep your voice low. She may have left her goon nearby to watch. She's a bounty hunter named uh, Triniette. Tr Triniette? Trinette? Trinette? Oh god, Trinette. She's currently on the hunt for a person called Duke January, if you haven't been paying attention. Oh, is that all? Piper looks around, seemingly uninterested in answering either of my question. I assume January is that guy hiding? Just wait a bit longer, okay? I want to make sure we're in the clear before we move anyway. I suppose that means the person hiding behind us is Duke January she she's searching for? Yes, and I'm sure he would appreciate it if you kept talking with me a bit, just to make sure he isn't seen. Sound alright? This problem is not my problem. You can help me, and I'll help you. It would be certainly- it would certainly take a long time to search the entire city for your own, and Kia is waiting. Her tone is cockier than I appreciated. However, she has a point. Putting up with these people in a small pipe is a small price to pay if it means finding Kia sooner. Well then, I think we have to deal. Very good. I'll ask if we have to try to keep up the conversation. Or at least the illusion of one. Certainly. What do I say? Is there a code? No, you can say whatever you want. Mm. My eyes briefly drift over to the important duke, who is still crouching down near the ground and appears to be shaking slightly. It's I'm a bit impressed someone his size can compact themselves that much. He is pretty tall from what his sprite looked like. Are you this man's friend? Most people around here know who the duke is by name, me included. This is actually the first time I met him in person, though I've been told that he kind of but though I've been told what he looked like. Either way, we don't know each other. I just happened to be in the neighborhood when this all started. She looks around again. Isn't constantly looking around one of the most suspicious things a person can do? That is true! But let's not talk about the Duke for a bit. I knew she didn't mean it when she said I could talk about whatever I wanted. 
Why don't you tell me about yourself? What brings you? What brings a person from the sanctuary all the way to Mary? Oh, the best, the best of reasons. You see, I was permitted to look into my future. In my vision, I discovered that in a few years. Uh, time, I will be married to someone outside the sanctuary. I, of course, I left as soon as possible to find them. The man behind us speaks up while raising his head and looking in our direction. Pardon me for asking, but is Kia a person you are referring to? Yes, my vision of Kia was so clear. I could recognize them anywhere if only I saw them. What a wonderful gift to know someone like that. I hope you find them. I appreciate the sentiment, but I hope it hope is not in my factor. My vision of the future is secure, so it's only a matter of time before I find Kia. You really shouldn't talk yet, Duke. Looking somewhat abashed, the Duke again falls silent and lowers his head, returning to the complete ball form. So if you're a future seer, why did you look into your own future? I thought that was some of the number one thing seers weren't supposed to do. Believe me, I understand the consequences far better than you ever will. Besides, I only viewed it one time, and have no intention to use that power on myself again. January's head snaps back up, eyes are aligned with curiosity, and he speaks again despite Piper's warning. You mean you'll never use your powers again? Not that necessarily. I could always use it for, it for others. If I choose so, why do you ask? Well, if you can use it for others, perhaps you could use it to show me my future? Piper gives January a stern look, while, which I ignore. That I can do if you wish. Oh yes, I would rather think I would. Piper shakes her head again, finally relaxing completely. I suppose there's no need to keep quiet now. We haven't been jumped at any half a dozen times we've drawn attention to the situation, so I think it's safe to say that we're not being watched. Damn, this guy is so tall compared to Piper. Holy shit, dude. Fucking, he looks like a tree, my god. With a, with a grateful sigh, January emerges from his hiding spot. Now that he's standing upright, I have, a cra I have to crane my neck to look at his face. I miss when I have to look down at him already. <laughs> with a warm smile, he turns to me. Tell me, how long does it take to view someone's future? Only a few moments. Wonderful! Could you do it right now? Certainly, all you need to do is hold still. I can also show you your future if you'd like, Piper. No, thank you. That's a shame. Well, one more opportunity to use my powers is grand enough, so I shouldn't complain. Fine. Now, what would you like to see? I, re I recommend not looking too near into the present, Duke. Knowing what's going to happen closes your own, t uh, own time generally doesn't work out for the viewer's favor. She's right. How much does she know? Was she a- Maybe she was a seer before with all this knowledge because like Buffalo Seer said that the normals are not supposed to know about their order and the whole thing. So maybe she used to be one of them. That'd be really interesting. Or maybe she's still one. Maybe she's one of the ones that we met in the earlier. I don't know. I recommend at least a few years. Three is the typical minimum. Very good. Please show me my future three years from now. Then, just keep still for a moment. He closes his eyes and remains motionless. I direct my power towards him, and he begins to give off a soft light. After the light fades, the duke smiles broadly and sighs. It is my immediate appearance some, some type of weight has been taking off his frail-looking frame. Thank you, seer. You have gr greatly relieved my mind. I'll never be able to repay this. He seems so excited, I'm actually surprised he didn't literally leap with joy. I am not, I'm not able to see what you saw myself, so it is good to hear that it was something you, something desired, Duke. As my, as for repayment, find, finding Kia is all I need. I thank you again. My circumstances presently are not ideal, but I will do whatever I can to help find Kia. And please, you may call me January, of course. The same goes for you, Piper. Sure, if you two are finished, then I suggest we move on. Piper points on and I notice another person dressed like the goon from earlier coming towards us. Oh. Uh-oh. We both follow Piper down the street and dash towards a section filled with what appears to be homes. She keeps us moving at a pace that's hard for me to maintain, though January lopes along easily with his long legs. He moves in a breezy manner, almost like he's enjoying this now. His future must be excellent indeed. After a while, after a while however, neither January nor can I keep up with Piper, who appears to have been well conditioned to such extent extortions. She noticed us lagging behind and comes to a halt, giving us time to catch our breaths. Gratefully for our break, I lean down and take a deep breath. The airflow is somewhat hampered by my mask, which is certainly not made for this kind of work. Did we lose them? Swil swiveling her head from the side to side, Piper intently listens to our surroundings, again giving us the impression that being chased is not a new occurrence for her. After a moment, she narrows her gaze and gives me a ply. I still hear something. We have to keep going. Are you both ready? January shrugs. If we must. Don't concern yourself with me, just lead the way. I certainly hope that you aren't forgetting that I'm only here because I'm supposed to find 
because they're supposed to help me find Kia. Piper nods, bundling the front of her dress with her arms as best as she can and runs again with January and I close behind. Where the hell are we going? After a short distance, Piper turns us down to the alleyway of a main street. The cool shade is a relief. I begin to say something when the another voice calls out to us. Stop! No one move! Oh, who's this? The three of us halt and a figure appears in front of us. Emerging from, si from a side path, I blink in my eyes in astonishment. It's them! E oh, this is Kia! Even with a red scarf and their hair covering the much of their face, I could recognize Kia anywhere. I found them at last. Kia strikes an authoritative pose, so strong and confident, drawing forth a badge from their sleeve. I'm an officer of Marie, supposed to be doing undercover work. But as of right now, I'm here to help Duke January get to safety. Also, I'm gonna need you to come I'm gonna need you to come as well. Kia points right to me and I can't help but smile. Of course, I'll go anywhere you need me to. Don't be so hasty, Seer. Remember, it is illegal for you to be dressed like the way you are in Marie. They will put you in jail. Do not ruin this moment for me with your useless concern, January. Oh, what the hell? January's just being nice. Come on. I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. Oh my god. I move closer towards Kia. Hardly able to control myself. Kia recoils away away from me, eyes alerted. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit weird because there's somebody who dresses like a seer coming up to you and be like, Oh my god, I love you. <laughs> like, I would be a little bit creeped out too, so I don't blame them. That's close enough, criminal. What do you think is going on here? <laughs> this is going to be such a lovely story to tell someday. Are you in the right mind? I am. You and I are going to be married. Oh god! <laughs> Kia's eyes widen in what appears to be horror. No, we are not. <laughs> yes, we are. Kia looks at me up and down, and the realization crosses their features. Oh no, that color. You're a seer, aren't you? Mm-hmm. An authentic one, my dear Kia. Kia's, Kia's eyes squint, and their fingers start twitching. So this is the way of telling me you saw the future? Exactly! I looked into my own future and saw that you and I will be married in a few years from now on. Isn't that brilliant? No, no, I can't believe a word someone in your position says. Besides, it's so unlikely you're truly abnormal. Actually, they showed me my own future not long ago. I forgot the, those people were still here. What? That's illegal! Duke, you're above the law! January weighs up Kia's warning as if it was dust in the wind. How rude. I know, I have a reason to be concerned, my future is fine. Damn it, this is serious! Piper giggles slightly at the event unfolding. Also very rude. Please don't be upset, Kia. I can show you your future and let you see I'm right. No thank you. This can't be happening. It must be a trick or some kind of sick joke. Shaking their head, Kia's face becomes stern. Regardless of your supposed power, I need you and Duke January to come with me to the police station right now. It's not safe for you to stay out here, and you, Seer, are under arrest for fraud. As I said, I'll go wherever you want. Kia grumbles something I can't hear. I hope it's something good. <laughs> Buffalo Seer, please! <laughs> this this person, oh my goodness. January, without permission, places his hand on my shoulder and smiles. Congratulations, Seer. I'm so glad that you found that you were looking for. Stop this! None of you know what you're talking about right now. Well, that looks like a lot less time than I was uh, planning. I'd say this was a rousing success. I don't want any more talk of future scenes. Do you want to cause a bigger panic than we've already got? I'm sorry, Kia. I promise I won't speak of it ever again. Until later. At least you're compliant. Of sort of. Alright, you you two follow me. Actually, I'll tag along too. You're a civilian unrelated to this situation and have no business following us. Not exactly. I know the cap... I know the captain of the police have liked to talk to him about the today's incident. After all, I spoke with both of the bounty hunters uh, and this person from the sanctuary before you did, officer. Miss Piper were greatly aiding me in the escape earlier, and I would feel much more comfortable if she was going to join us. Kia rubs her eyes in dismay. I am equally disappointed in the extra company. Having to share Kia's attention with January was unfortunate enough already. Fine, but don't slow us down. And no more conversations until we reach the station. We all nod, then begin to follow Kia through the empty streets towards the station towards the rest of my life. What the hell is happening? <laughs> the walk through the police station was filled with the scent of smoke, sweat, and oil. Not a pleasant experience. Sweat, woo! 
I pace back and forth, trying to keep my mind occupied as I wait for my Kia to return to me. Okay, like I know, I know the seer saw their future and Kia is supposed to be married to them. I get that part. I get they can be all excited because it's like, oh, that's a, like the love of my life or whatever, or the person I'm gonna marry. I know they're probably really excited, but it's very creepy because you're acting like you guys are already in an established relationship. Obviously, Kia's freaked out. I would be freaked out too, like some fucking- If some random person came up to me like, Yo, I know the future, you're gonna marry me. And we're gonna- we're gonna be married and be happy and everything, and you're my lovely person? Like, no, that's- that's really weird. As of now, only January and myself are here. Kia, the captain, and the lady are having a discussion elsewhere. I was given the privilege to remain alone with January in this room because he was insistent on it. Admittedly, I feel some relief when they cro they chose to leave us here rather than the actual holding cells we would passed. I think this might be the captain's personal office. January appears nervous, though I can't imagine what he has to worry about in this situation. Some people can only think about themselves, I suppose. Like the buffalo seer? <laughs> There's no reason to be concerned, right? Things will be fine. He sounds like he's speaking more to himself rather than me. To, I don't respond. The doors to the room open and the gray great relief Kia walks in. I rush to them immediately, but they raise a hand as as I get close. No, not so fast. Back up, you. Reluctantly, I comply, though I do not move back too far. January and Osa come a little closer, looking hopeful. Does this mean I'm allowed to leave now? No. His face immediately falls into a look of great displeasure. If he wasn't directed at Kia, I might think it would be a little humorous. Then, could you at least inform me as what they are, you are planning on doing? When the captain has arrived, he will be able to tell you more. For now, I've been ordered to watch you two until he comes. Fine. I'm glad he sent you. If you don't mind, might I ask you a question? Kia looks a bit impatient but nods. What is it? Will you- <laughs> What the fuck? Will you marry me? They slap one hand against their forehead instinctively. No. The answer is firm, which is unfortunate, but I am not deterred. Why are you even asking me? Didn't you already see it in the future? Isn't that enough for you? I want to show you how serious I am, so you don't keep thinking that I'm trying to trick you. Also, being married to you will be spectacular, so I'm just going to keep asking you until the moment you say yes. That is no time wa is wasted. Oh my god. Buffalo, see your no. God, can you please chill the fuck out, dude? That kind that kind of thinking makes me like, like you less, you know? Who would want someone strange proposing to them all the time? True, but that is how I am. And because our marriage is guaranteed, I want to make sure that you're marrying me for who I am, not for an act that I put on to convince you to like me. Kia shakes their head. This whole conversation is wasted is a waste of time. In fact, since you're here at the police headquarters, you should remain silent until the captain comes. Not how I would like to spend this time, but I respect them and their work, so I dutifully remain silent. A few moments later, Piper, the young woman from earlier, and the police captain, who I, who I met from when I first arrived here, enter the room. Kia heads right over to the captain with a look of apparent relief. I made sure to follow and stay nearby them, but they fixed the but they fix uh, me a gaze that says in no certain terms that I am to keep my distance, followed by a commanding finger pointing to where January is standing. I'm not going to go all the way over there, but I don't get any close. I don't. I don't get any closer either. Thank you for your patience, Duke January. After consulting the officer Kia, we've decided that you should be remained here under police protection until the threat of the captured has passed. We are also in the process of contacting the wall, the wall sanctuary, to deal with you, Buffalo Seer. January folds his arms and begins to nervously tap his foot, making his disapproval of the captain's plan obvious even before to speak. I'm sorry to say, Captain, but I am far from thrilled to, keep he to be kept here for an extended period. I would much prefer to leave as soon as possible. Be reasonable, Duke. We've been through this and it feels much safer than leaving. Exactly. Right now, the bounty on your head is no small sum. Though we are searching, we have yet to confirm who placed the bounty. Until they are found or receded in the office, the hunters will not stop trying to find you. We will do everything in our power to make sure that the former happens, but until then, you need to remain in ins inconspicuous as possible. Piper raises a hand to get our attention and begins to speak. The captain is right about one thing. There's no bigger threat than Trinette. She is a highly successful bounty hunter with many followers and resources. However, Trinette upsets over-efficient and gets things done quickly as possible. That works in our favor. All you have to do is stay secure long enough to, that the cost of finding you outweighs the possible reward. Once that happens, she'll go up the chase. Piper pauses a moment and looks to all of us. 
I think you all know who I'm talking about then when I said Trinette, right? I think about earlier today when uh, and realized Trinette must be the woman with the strange glowing eyes who con who cornered Piper and me while we were concealing January. Kia scoffs a little at Piper's consideration. Of course we all know Trinette. I smile behind my mask and nod as well. Indeed, Trinette is a woman with a gun and pink eyes that, that light up. Kia looks to me in surprise as if I didn't realize I would exactly know that. I hope their suitability was impressed. Piper nods. Exactly. Excuse me, but how long do you think I have to wait here? Couple of weeks, maybe a month, if that's an amazing offer. A group can't go much longer than that without collecting a reward. Oh. From the tone of his voice, it is clear that it, that it is much longer than he hoped for. Come on now, you can tolerate being here for a few weeks. I mean, honestly, if I was in January's position and I know people were coming to kill me, I probably w wouldn't mind staying here for a few weeks. Like, seriously, I don't want to die. <laughs> well, as you all saw, staying in the popular area is no deterrent for Trinette, even the capital. Since that's the case, uh, and most of us are, and most of your officers are tied up looking for the for the one who made up the bounty, I don't think it's entirely unreasonable if January stayed elsewhere, as long as it's secure. I'm pleased to hear you suggest that. In that case, I would prefer to go back home. It is certainly well protected. Kia shakes their head. It's rather cute. Isn't the house you're talking about the, on the surface? You'll be nothing but a sitting duck out there. Mm, I did realize your hut was off the land fraction, Duke. I side with Kia on this one. If any group knew that you went there, it's unlikely you'd uh, complete the trip. Clearly, this is not an option. I repeat my offer of police protection. If the station is not suitable for your liking, we can arrange uh, other accommodations nearby. January looks highly satisfied with the alternative. Very well, if you cannot go to my house on the surface, my family owns another property that is also quite secure. Where's that? It's on the other side of this land fraction. The three consider for a moment, with Kia and Piper both nodding. That would be less obvious than going to your main home on the surface, and at least on the land fraction, there are all ways to keep you out of sight. That's true. I would say this is a better option of the two. I'm glad you all agree. I would like to go there then. I wish there, I don't wish to be a burden to the uh, to the police any longer, and frankly, I'm hardly worried about the bounty hunters myself. The disruption they cause is far more grievous. It is my job of the police to take care of the citizenry. You are in need of never mind inconveniencing us. I would much prefer you remain here. I'm sorry, but I would prefer to leave. As much as I appreciate your assistance, you cannot r rightly comply, comp uh, compel me to remain. If I wish to leave, that is my decision. The captain grumbles, looking a bit pout put out. I can't disagree, as I loathe to admit. At least give me some peace of mind by taking some kind of escort with you. I can quickly run if the officers are available, and they'll be happy to accompany you. Excuse me, sir, but I don't think that would be g such a good idea. What do you mean? A large group might offer a semblance of security, but it's also much easier to find. That's true, they would know it. It's be like, why is this group of officers like hanging out with this guy, you know what I mean? Because Trinette is armed, avoiding fights in this first place should be the priority. Not to mention the Crosslands Fraction, one, of that, one has to go through some narrow and unstable, unstable places. A large group would be more hinderous than helping there. In my opinion, the Duke's best chance to go with a small group and finish the trip quickly as possible. She has a point, Captain. Besides, you need more help here to track down the ones who placed the bounty. No matter the number of hunters, if the bounty disappears, they'll have much less the reason to keep the Duke, even if we don't, even if they get a hold of him. Pepper nods in agreement. If you'd like to do more, perhaps you can help create distractions here in the city, giving us a chance to slip out without being noticed. Some such kind of false escort party going in the opposite direction for, from us. Then have the Duke take a few people and rush through his house as fast as he can. That's sound thinking. We'll do everything in our end to make an appealing target as possible. Now, since there is a group of aiming to be low profile, I will assign Officer Kia to you. There are no undercover assignments anyway, so no citizen will recognize them as a police officer. I understand. Who will be assigned? It's not much trouble, so I'd like to come. I know the area outside the city well, and the, the most experienced with bounty hunters uh, out of this bunch. Jerry looks satisfied with the arrangement, smiling contently. Yes, you four should make a fine traveling party. Piper, Kia, and the captain look to one another in confusion. You want one more officer? Certainly not. One one is enough, I think. I think that Seer will be joining us. That makes us four. All of them me with mixed emotion. For a moment, I am sure unsure how to react. He wants me to come? Odd as it is, I appreciate the invitation. Kia is going, oh my god. <laughs> so it's not the as though I could bring myself to stay behind. 
Yes, of course I'll be coming. No, you will not. We are here to process of contacting the sanctuary. I can't have you out of my sights until then. Contacting them will do no good, Captain. You see, Seer is normal. Almost everyone shows an obvious shock and an unexpected realization, none more than me. Thankfully, my mask hides my expression. The one who, and only who doesn't look surprised is Piper, who merely frowns with the consideration. You can't be serious. January doesn't flinch, but Kia looks really unsettled, so much as the captain gives me a stern look. Settle down, Officer Kia, and let's hear this explanation. Kia mumbles an apology and steps farther away from all of us, eyes drifting off. The captain and Piper focus on me. While my focus remains like Kia, whatever January's scheme, it's ruined by my declaration. I have to try- I've tried so hard to make them believe in our future, and now what look, look has come to it. January gives me a look, quick look, and then faces the captain. Seer is actually one of my bodyguards, sent by my family. They are dressed like this to serve a more enticing target, since the abnormal is likely a rare sight and worth much more than the sanctuary and the others. We are separated during the initial attack, and Seer ran to try to draw attention away from me. Obviously it worked. So you see, since the Seer is a personal protector, there should be no problem with them accompanying- Oh, I see what January is doing! He's being a bro and trying to help uh, Buffalo Seer keep close with Kia, because remember, that was their goal? So, and he said earlier, since we, we showed them um, our, their future, January was just like, how can I ever repay you? And this is how he's doing it. So you see, since Seer is a personal protector, there should be no problem with the accompanying us. Duke January is such a ruse is far as from acceptable. Making the populace believe that an abnormal among us could wise widespread issues. You can't allow your people to act such manner. I do apologize, Captain, but considering the situation that the bounty hunters caused, I hardly consider Seer's disguise unwarranted. Still, I will make sure not to let it happen again. Kia keeps the glare on me, making me wish I could speak up, but I am unable to. I don't know what to say. I feel trapped. The Captain frowns but nods. In that case, I can really say nothing, nothing to stop you. There are... They are your employee, after all. Sir, with your permission, I'd like to have this seer tested to collaborate the Duke's claim. Actually, I would much rather leave as soon as possible, tomorrow morning preferably. There won't be much time for such a test, and I'd rather not be delayed just for your unwarranted suspicion. No offense, officer. Unwarranted? Have you listened to anything they've said? That's enough, Officer Kiyo. I believe that we can both assure that the Duke will not be preventing him from leaving, and that you will be still gladly during the party. Kia looked at the captain almost desperately, as if they can't believe that they're he what they're hearing. The captain leans in and speaks low, though not low enough that it can't be overheard by me. You can't just go accusing people like the Duke of lying, and I'm not sure you must agree. And I'm sure you must agree that it's much more believable than an actual abnormal appearing within our city. Kia doesn't look. Kia does not look mollified, but they lean out away without further protest. I thank you both for your consideration. Since the rest of the Sears things were left at the hotel, I hope you won't mind that they I hope you won't mind that them remain dressed in the way that until we reach my home. We aren't luck we aren't likely to run into anyone else on our journey, after all. Very well. I suppose the immediate danger has already passed, and if it shouldn't be a problem, for now, we shall convey a meeting to prepare this journey tomorrow. Miss Piper, I recommend you head home and meet me back here in the morning at dawn. Officer Kia, you should do likewise. I shall have the Duke and his bodyguards remain here for the night, as if it's the safest location in the city. January gives Captain the polite bow. Thank you, Captain. As long as the Seer and I are in the same room, we will both appreciate the gesture. I assure you. Pepper gives us a sly smirk. Well, well then, until tomorrow, this is going to be an interesting trip, I suspect. With a wave, she leaves the room. Kia takes a few steps towards me, speaking only so I can hear. So, this is how you want it to go? What can I say? If I don't lie, I might get sent away for a short period. I can't risk it, so I remain silent. With a bitter shake of the head, Kia leaves the room. I feel an odd guilt of disappointing them, though I console myself that I must be resolved soon enough. Please follow me to your room. He nods cordially to January me, then leaves. I'm not able to move myself immediately. All I can do is wonder how this happened. Why would January lie about me? Before I can finish another thought, January speaks to me in a low voice. I'm sure you might imagine. Just to be clear, if anyone tries to speak to you without my presence, do not allow it. It's just that you are not have nothing to say and cannot leave my side. I must go mention that there are many individuals in this building who could just happen to overhear what other people are saying. Because of that, we should refra refrain from conversation until tomorrow, lest there be any other misunderstandings. Agreed? Right, of course. The idea of spending a trip lying, lying to Kia does not sit well with me 
in the in the least. However, I can't see any other option. I'm sorry, Kia. Okay, so I'm gonna end this here. This was so interesting. And I think because of the three options I picked, Kia was the red scarf that I picked, so that is the route I'm on. My impressions of Kia, they're freaked out. I don't blame them. I would be freaked out too, because like some random person is coming up to me saying, Yo, you're gonna be married to me. And the fact that, that the Buffalo Sierra needs to chill a little bit because they're a little bit too excited. I get it, but they need to calm down. But I do like this whole January. It seems like people are following January. I, I still want to learn more about this world, but let me know in the comments if you guys want me to continue this as a series because this is, I find this very interesting. It's just, I need more context of like what is happening. You know what I mean? To get into the story. But like I said in the beginning, if you guys would like to grab the game yourself, there's a link in the description. Uh, I believe there's an Ichio uh, link too, but for sure it is on Steam. And please let me know in the comments if you want me to continue this as a series and we can d divulge into Kia's root. Because Kia's freaked out right now and I don't blame them. <laughs> Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Hey, you! Who the fuck said that? Do you love watching a girl in a game's YouTube videos? Yes, but what are you doing in my house? Well, you're in luck. Today, she's happy to announce her Patreon page. That's amazing, but. That's Patreon, you say.